For decades, scientists all over the world have been working to create an artificial intelligence that would be able to rival the human mind or even surpass it. And now it seems that nature is now as close to it as it never was before. The computer already secures confident victory over man in checkers, chess, and go, a table game that was considered to be beyond the artificial intelligence's capacity. Logical thinking alone is not enough to win a game of Go. The players have to use their intuition. And it seemed that the computer has no intuition, and it won't be able to calculate for a long time. Therefore, its victory wasn't expected. This breakthrough was made possible due to the invention of an artificial neuron network. This unique self-learning computer algorithm was created by scientists in the image and likeness of the neural network of living organisms. And now it actually demonstrates purely human qualities. No one believed that artificial neural networks would be able to solve this task or even approach a human. They managed to do it in three years. In fact, an artificial neural network is actually a model of operation of biological neurons. The human brain cells, but it's represented as a set of mathematical instructions recorded in the form of a software code. But it wouldn't be exactly right to call a neural network a classic algorithm. Its design is much more complicated. Many processes in it are nonlinear but parallel. They occur at the same moment just like in the human brain. Any concept in the neural network system is immediately encoded by a huge number of artificial neurons. Let's take a pen, for example. We perceive a pen as something whole, as an object. But at the level of neuronal activity, there may be dozens to millions of neurons associated with the pen in the human brain. That is, they are active when we think about this object. This distributed encoding of information is inerrant in such highly parallel systems as neural networks. What is their advantage? First of all, it's their parallelism itself. That is, they are capable of processing huge amounts of parallel streams of incoming information. In an artificial neural network, each neuron is represented in the form of a processor. It has channels for signal input and output. At the input, each signal passes through certain connections that mimic the synoptic activity of biological neutrons, that is, their ability to exchange information. Each artificial neuron can only work with one unit of incoming information and perform a most simple function. But as soon as they are combined into a network, they are already capable of coping with extremely complex tasks, which are beyond the capabilities of regular programming methods. Neural networks are currently being used everywhere. They can be found in sound recognition, in speech synthesis, including the cases where we have some handwritten text and we need to synthesize the speech. For example, neural networks are widely used in different voice assistants, navigators, and all kinds of applications. There are also many tasks associated with translation into different languages, for example. Most machine translation systems in almost all search companies use neural networks inside themselves in one way or another. The idea of creating the first artificial neural network was born as early as in the middle of the 20th century. At that time, scientists suggested that if they emulate the operation of the brain neuron somehow, they would be able to create a truly intellectual computing machine. In 1957, the American scientist Frank Rosenblatt managed to design the first mathematical model of the work of neurons. It was called Perceptron and became, in fact, the first artificial neural network in history. A year later, it was used as a basis for creating the neural computer Mark I, which could recognize the letters of the Latin alphabet. Today, artificial neural networks are all around us. Most of us don't even suspect that we resort to their help literally every day. For example, if we type in a query in the internet search systems, artificial neural networks find all the answers for us. However, these computing systems are capable of something more than simply solving routine tasks. It became obvious on March 15, 2016, when the whole world heard the news that the artificial intelligence won another victory over mankind. 
With a score of four to one, the computer program AlphaGo defeated the strongest player on the planet, the Korean Lee Sedol, in the table logical game Go. Despite its relatively simple rules, this ancient Chinese game is considered one of the most difficult ones. It is much more difficult than chess, for example. If we consider the tree of variants in checkers, from the initial position of figures and to the final point, that is, to someone's victory or draw, there will be about 10 to the 40th degree of variance. In chess, there are 10 to the 120th degree of variance. In the game of Go, the variability of the tree of variance is approximately estimated as 10 to the 400th degree. This value, 10 to the 400th degree, is the order of magnitude of the number of variants. In order for you to understand whether this number is great or small, I can tell you that the estimated number of atoms in the entire universe is about 10 to the 80th degree. Scientists believe no modern computer is capable of such large-scale calculations. However, the main feature of Go is not an event that it is impossible to calculate all possible variants of the development of the game. In order to play, it is necessary to use intuition, the quality that has always been the prerogative of man. The way of playing that appeared during the last year, the one demonstrated by AlphaGo, there are several more programs based on that very principle and use neural networks likewise. The computer has started to use intuition. That is, the computer doesn't calculate all the moves, it calculates the moves that it intuitively, I'm emphasizing this word once again, considers right. How did a computer program manage to use intuition? It turns out that AlphaGo acquired this ability on its own. The principle of operation of artificial neural networks is based on the so-called machine learning, where the algorithm literally learns to carry out the set task. Like humans, the neural network learns by trial and error. At the very beginning, it can't even distinguish between light and dark, or a circle and a square. The signals between artificial neurons are transmitted spontaneously. However, while making mistakes and receiving new signals, the system adjusts its operation on its own. This process continues until the neural network begins to produce a stable, correct result. That's right. Learning of the neural networks requires the presence of a teacher from our side. When the neural network is learning, the teacher tells it what is right and what is wrong. The simplest example is with images. When a neural network recognizes a wrong class on an image, we tell it that this class is wrong and that some other class is right. And the weights in this neural network adjust themselves in such a manner as to produce the correct answer. After seeing a big number, like tens of millions of such examples, the neural network actually understands what a cat is and what a dog is. The term of learning, obviously, depends on the complexity of the task and the volume of the data that the neural network needs to memorize. There are very simple tasks, such as recognizing handwritten digits. We only have 10 of them, and a neural network can be trained literally in one and a half hours to recognize handwritten digits. This is because it doesn't need so much data to understand how each digit looks. On the other hand, learning to distinguish between different breeds of cats and dogs may very well take a week. Training of a neural network can take months. For example, the program AlphaGo, which actually consists of several separate neural networks, took half a year to learn Go. When a neural network learns to predict the next move, there are a huge number of finished games, and the program supposes which move will be played next in each of the games. And the algorithm is adjusted in such a manner as to increase the accuracy of predictions of the next move. Another separate program, another neural network, learned how to predict the winner. The intelligence consists in the fact that no one said that it is necessary to play like this in this position. The machine learned to do it on its own. This event, without a doubt, became a breakthrough in the field of artificial intelligence. However, scientists believe that it will still be a long time before neural networks will manage to overcome a human in all fields, not just in logical games. 
If there is a clearly formulated specific task with a great amount of data for learning, artificial neural networks can demonstrate better results than people in solving it. As soon as we start talking about some complex, difficult task, the necessity of certain accumulated life experience, the computer has nowhere to get it from. As soon as we talk about such complex things as goal setting, when we don't decide how to complete a task, but rather determine what the task should be, the computer is powerless here, of course. As of today, it seems impossible to create an artificial intelligence that would be similar to the human mind. To do so, scientists at the very least have to unravel all the mysteries of our brain. Currently, science is incapable of it. We still can't even clearly formulate the definitions of such concepts as mind, consciousness or feelings. From the point of view of natural sciences, we cannot use these concepts because they are still so to speak, in the field of philosophical questions. They are not formalized. What does it mean to feel? For example, I can sense my fingers touch each other, but it is still unclear how to formalize it. For example, living neural systems are examined in the Kurchatov Institute, in the Laboratory of Neurointelligence and Neuromorphic Systems. The task of the scientists is to study the mechanisms responsible for memory and the ability to learn at the cellular level, and ideally, learn how to manage them. The process of our experiments looks the following way. We take animals, uh, laboratory mice, we take brain tissue samples from them, and then destroy this tissue with the help of special enzymes. Then we have separate nerve cells, and we plant them in a nutrient solution in order to keep them alive out of the body. It is important that in the process of extracting the cells, we destroy all connections between them. That is, the cells turn into separate particles. Destruction of the old connections is necessary to make the cells form new ones. It turns out that even in the Petri dish, neurons continue to do what is genetically programmed in them, to grow and form a neural network. In about 12 to 14 days, we will be able to see them interact. With the help of electrodes on a multi-electrode matrix, we can measure electrical voltage on these cells. As you know, it changes rapidly when the cells are active. It can be easily seen on the display. According to the hypothesis of scientists, neural network attempts to formulate a strategy of behavior in unusual conditions. By applying electrical impulses to the cells, scientists force the neural network to change this strategy, thus acquiring and memorizing the new experience. Hypothetically, we expect the culture to respond to our stimulation in a certain manner. We stimulate it specifically. After this, the culture is expected to memorize the correct answer. That is, every time after stimulation, a certain response from the culture will occur. We are trying to achieve it, and we're quite successful in it. While one group of scientists works on studying the mechanisms of neural memory, another group recreates these mechanisms in the form of a special device known as a memristor. Actually, there are two key elements in the brain, neuron and synapse. Synapse is the connection between neurons. Synapse has the remarkable property of being able to change the efficiency of signal transmission between neurons. Thus, it is capable of realizing the property of memory. Memristors simulate the same property. What is a memristor? This is a resistor with the memory effect. A memristor can individually memorize only its own electrical conductivity or resistivity, which is the same. But in combination with other memristors, it can actually form a certain memory an integral one, as we perceive it, a pen, for example. The ultimate goal of scientists is to create a self-learning microchip based on such memristors. This device could be used, for example, in creating neuromorphic systems, that is, high-tech systems operating according to the principle of neurons of the human brain and brains of higher animals. Scientists believe that it will help create a fundamentally new generation of supercomputers with a whole string of advantages. The first is the autonomy of work in the sense of independence from Internet communications. The second is the reduced weight and size parameters. 
The third is the speed of action, of course. Even though modern supercomputers have many cores, but there are only thousands of them. You see? They can't compare to the millions of cores on a chip that is planned to be used in neuromorphic systems. Of course, they will work faster, and their architecture will be initially built according to the principle of the brain architecture. Modern technologies in the field of artificial intelligence are actually rapidly developing. At times, scientists can't even tell what breakthrough shall be expected in this field in the near future. I'll predict something, and by the time when the viewers see this program, it will turn out that there are 15 startups involved in the same thing. It will look something completely outdated. Today, everything is developing at such rates that the reality gets ahead of our imagination. Indeed, not long ago, everybody was sure that neural networks would never be able to solve truly creative tasks. But soon after, it turned out that a neural network can paint pictures, compose paintings, and write poems. Therefore, it is possible that the script of the following film about life and development of the artificial intelligence will be written by this intelligence itself.